A Frenchman who owned number 10 on Ustash recently bought out the adjoining claim for $1,000 and now owns 600 feet. One day during a week commencing August 16, 1875, 31 ounces of dust was taken out. In this gulch, there are about 50 located claims of 300 feet each. This was written in 1877 by the inspector of mines. Placer mining died out in 1915 in Eustache Creek. In 1939, a drag line operated in the same area of Eustache Creek, but it was not a financial success. Hi, I'm Nancy Rusho. I'm the abandoned mineland coordinator for the Northern Region. I'm sitting in the cab of an old abandoned drag line similar to what would have operated in Eustache Creek. In just five months, in 1939, over 60,000 yards of material were washed in Eustache Creek, with very little gold being recovered. After that point in time, the operation left Eustache and left it in a completely disturbed state. The stream channel that formed over thousands of years was turned over and destroyed by the mining operation. During the mining process, all boulders were removed and stacked out of the way. Gravels were washed, sending most of the fine sediment downstream. The coarser material was either returned to the stream channel or put to the side of the creek. Not much vegetation could grow in this cobble-sized gravel. The stream no longer functioned properly and left poor habitat for aquatic species. In places, the creek even went underground through the porous cobble piles. Eustache Creek has been in the same sterile condition for the past 70 years, until now. The Forest Service and Trout Unlimited have come together to form a partnership to restore Eustache Creek. Hi, I'm Gary Edson. I'm the District Ranger at Nine Mile Ranger Station on the Willow National Forest in western Montana. And I wanted to talk a little about the Eustache Mine Reclamation Project and our partnership with Trout Unlimited. We couldn't have done this project uh, without Trout Unlimited's commitment and dedication towards doing a reclamation of a placer mine site. Well, my name is Rob Roberts. I work for Trout Unlimited. And uh, I've been working on mine restoration programs for the last three years. Uh, I used to be based out of the Washington, D.C. office. Just recently came to Missoula uh, a couple of years ago to focus on organizing on the ground restoration projects that had a benefit for native fish and also had to do with old mining areas. So we thought we could come in here in a partnership project with the Forest Service, both Lolo National Forest and uh, Forest Service Region 1. My name's Scott Spaulding and I'm the fisheries biologist for the Lolo National Forest here on Nine Mile. And we're up here at the Eustache Creek Mine Reclamation Site. And this is the headwaters of Nine Mile Creek. It's a fairly good stronghold for native West Slope cutthroat trout production. When they came in here with their drag lines, they basically lowered the elevation of this, this whole valley bottom from valley wall to valley wall, probably up to eight feet. Some of that material has been piled onto the sides. A lot of it, the finer material, is washed out of the system and been deposited further downstream. There was no reclamation at all uh, as far as reclaiming it. They just moved over and did another strip and threw, th threw the overburden over on that. My dad, I know, and my mother, they didn't appreciate uh, the creek torn up, but it didn't belong to us, so what could we do about it? It was heated ground that they did all the mining on. Oh, there was no fish at all where they didn't mine. And there was muddy water and nothing clear on down the whole stream. It, it didn't clear up. 
And then we have these pretty extensive areas of confinement, which isn't a, a good situation for um, both trout habitat and natural stream function and water quality. Some of the other areas where they've just basically lowered the whole valley bottom is you get these, in the area that we're standing in, you get these extensive aggraded areas. And, and the result there is prior to restoration, you get a lot of um, water that's on the surface. You almost have this convex floodplain surface. And so you get multiple channels on top and you don't ever get the water concentrated into one of the channels. It's not able to do what water typically does in a stream and that is to scour, to transport and to redeposit and sort material in a way that fish have adapted to in a pool ripple structure. So we had this water that was all over the floodplain and then in the drier part of the summer because of all the fine material washed downstream what we found is in these certain areas particularly this area the graded middle reach is that our water would sub we would lose water so a lot of our native fish production capacity could not be realized because our water was gone. Hi, I'm Tracy Silty. I'm a hydrologist and an engineer on the Lolo National Forest, and I have a specialty in environmental river mechanics, stream restoration, and rehabilitation. We like to use excavators for this work for two basic reasons. First, we can be relatively light on the land. We can maneuver the excavator in tight, often uneven places, and we can remove our impacts as we go. And second, excavators can perform a variety of tasks. On Eustache Creek here, we use them to quickly move large quantities of material for the road decommissioning portion and for all of the tailing pile reshaping work that we did. We use them to reshape or relocate the stream in order to achieve some of our primary objectives, which were to restore the proper stream width and depths, the, the right stream gradient, and the right meander pattern. Also work such as installing the in-stream structures for habitat complexity and channel function, like uh, step pools and, and different log structures. We also use them to immediately revegetate all of the stream banks with sod and, and transplants. And then finally, unique to Eustache Creek, we use them for installing the groundwater retention sills. Um, we had an excavator in here last August. So we excavated a new stream channel, we regraded tailings piles that were confining the stream. Hopefully we're restarting a, a natural process here. The point of all of this work is, is many. There's the stream aspects of it, all the way to the biological aspects that are necessary for fish function, to other terrestrial needs such as providing a, a perennial flowing stream for all of the deer, elk, and our resident moose that we have within the drainage. Ready? Ready. We've got 26 volunteers out here today. They're all from Missoula uh, and the surrounding area. All uh, various ages, you know, various backgrounds. Um, and uh, we're basically trying to do the whole thing with the volunteer workforce in lieu of paying, a, you know, a, a big company to come in here and do it. We think it's an education and outreach venue for people to get out there and see what old mining areas were like and also learn about what restoring habitat looks like, learn about plants, learn about the native fish in this area. I've been working on the Eustache Creek project since the very beginning, so I'm planting little, little trees now that I was, I gathered the uh, seed for these trees. And then it's been growing and I've been involved with doing the fishery surveys and the, to see about the species and, and survey the stream before they did the actual structural restoration. So I'm, I'm just, this is really a celebration day for me because this is, this is about putting it all together. Well, my name is Mike Willett. I am uh, the president of the Missoula chapter of Trout Unlimited, the West Slope chapter. And uh, we partner with Rob Roberts and TU National and this is just a fantastic project. We, our membership, which is over 500 members, um, makes up, a, I think, the majority of the volunteers that have been doing this. And uh, we were involved in doing the willow cuttings, and now we get to put them in the ground. And uh, it's really kind of exciting to see this uh, project take shape. But, uh, yeah, it's a good organization, it's a good cause, and it's fun to actually do some hands-on stuff. There have been four things that uh, 
I would like to identify and, and acknowledge. And the first thing is it's, it's just been exciting to go and have the support from the forest to be able to work on a project from idea to prioritization, to fundraising, to design, implementation, and then post-project monitoring. That leads into the second item, which is really just a commitment to monitoring the project and what those, what those effects are. I think we need to collect data and we need to be objective about identifying what, what are the outcomes of our intervention so that we can inform future proposed activities. We've been able to do that with the third thing, which is the help and the participation and interaction with those Trout Unlimited volunteers, which have been huge to the project. They brought a lot of, lot of enthusiasm to the project, a lot of expertise to the project. I've trained a lot of them. A couple of them are out here right now shocking, so it's great to be able to, to be doing this and to actually um, have a few people work independently. And then Rob Roberts, who has really organized those Trout Unlimited volunteers, and I think given them a level of confidence that I think puts them in a position where they feel like they can do this in the future. And Rob, just a, an expert organizer as well as fundraiser. And then another huge leg to this whole stool has been the RO. They've been supportive of us. They brought funds in support of what we're doing. They're, I think, going to support us on out-year projects. And, and we've been able to demonstrate to them that we have a commitment from beginning to end on these projects. And it's not just a you know, a pie in the sky idea, but it's something that we're going to stick with. And I, I'm committed to that. And I look forward to the next working on the next projects with, with these multiple entities. The success of this project in Eustache Creek has already led to the planning of a new project in the next drainage down St. Louis Creek. We look forward to working with Trout Unlimited in the future on even more projects.